Contact a Family is a UK charity supporting families with disabled children, whatever their disability. Some families have children with extremely rare or undiagnosed conditions. I am here with a mum to talk about her experience of having a child with a neuronal migrational disorder, X-linked. Would you like to tell me a little bit about your family? I've got four children, Tijan, my eldest, and then I've got three boys, aged seven, five and three, and I'm married to Jo. Would you like to tell me a little bit about your daughter, Tijan? She's 12 and a half. She's a delight. She's my inspiration, really. She's great. Although she's got a disability, she's got a neuronal migration disorder, which is an excellent genetic condition. She meets day-to-day life head-on and conquers so many different things on a daily basis. The neuronal migration disorder is just one aspect of her disability. She's got learning disability. She's got dyspraxia. Day-to-day things that we take for granted, moving around the house, spatial awareness, she has to really focus on. She's kind. She's loving. She's stroppy because she's 12. Uh, she's into her hair and she's into makeup. She loves having her nails done. She loves her shoes. When did you first notice Tijan's difficulties or differences? I noticed them when she was at nursery from as young as two. I was working full time and she went to the, the works nursery. I saw other mothers with their children that went to the nursery and noticed their children were doing other things, talking better, stringing sentences together. Tijan wasn't doing that. I questioned the nursery and they said, oh, she's fine, don't worry. Ticked all the boxes when it came to her review. I took her to the health visitor who suggested there might be something wrong but didn't actually do anything to follow it up. And then she started school and it was when she was in reception. They did a baseline and they showed us where the average was and then showed us where Tijan was, which is way below average. So we had confirmation then that she had some sort of difficulties. We didn't know what it was. We went for hearing tests, eye tests. She had speech and language therapy which indicated that she was only on the first percentile for speech and language, which everybody threw their arms up in the air and said, oh, this is terrible, and then provided no resources to help us through it. And this happened every year. School was fantastic. She went to a mainstream primary school, and it was absolutely brilliant. They did everything they could. Her main problem was lack of confidence, and they've really helped her with that. And her schoolmates did as well. Before she could turn 10, she started having fits, not your normal seizures, but more absences where she would just freeze for anything up to two minutes at a time. She went for an MRI scan of her brain to rule out any tumours, which fortunately there wasn't a a tumour. But at that point, we got the diagnosis for the neuronal migration disorder. So we had the answer to all the questions that we've been looking for for the last six years. You mentioned going through a lot of tests and assessments and not really getting any answers. What did that process feel like, knowing that Tijan had difficulties but there was no name for it there was no diagnosis how did that feel emotionally I think I was probably flawed for about five years I didn't hear anything positive whenever we went for a test oh this is so bad there was nothing positive said I feel in a way that I lost most of Tijan's young childhood because there was no support there was no resource my husband was absolutely fantastic really helpful did all he could but it's ex-linked so I blamed myself being the mum passing it on. Rationally, I knew that wasn't the case, irrationally. I'm her mum. I'm supposed to have protected her. I'm supposed to have made her properly. But every single time we went for another test, I stopped doing it in the end. Didn't see any point. They couldn't tell me what the future held. They just told me what's happening there and then. And the piece of paper really wasn't what my daughter was. They would tell me something very negative about her, where in fact she's a very positive little girl. And I didn't want to keep putting her through that. There was no point. And then getting the actual name or being told why Tijan had these difficulties... Did that change anything for you, change any of your day-to-day life or change the way you felt about Tijan's future? It didn't really change day-to-day life other than the fact that I became a bit more anxious about the seizures because until we got the medication sorted out, I was constantly watching her. She was fitting a lot while she was asleep and it probably took about six months for the fits to present during the day. On a morning, I would often find her sitting down in her bedroom, sort of just sitting there, which was a bit strange. And she couldn't remember why she was sitting there. So we just thought, oh, it's just one of those things. And then once we got the the diagnosis, I felt relief that it wasn't a tumour. And I felt relief that I had an answer to why she had these disabilities. Two years ago, three years ago, academically, we just said, well, just go to school. You know, let's not bother pushing her. The school took a step back. She didn't get any homework. There wasn't any expectation for her. This school, they actually work towards GCSEs or MVQs or they do the Duke of Edinburgh Award. I didn't realise this sort of place existed It's fantastic. So now I feel quite confident that she will live independently. She will be able to manage some sort of job. 
she's a very caring person she talks about wanting to be a nurse which is unrealistic but she could be a nursing assistant she loves children she could work in a nursery school so I feel absolutely confident that at some point she will live independently she may not live too far away from us but she should be able to manage at the time of diagnosis you don't take in what it is all about you get the name and you don't hear anything else that is said because it's such a shock you've been told that your child's brain isn't formed as it should be. What advice would you give to other families in terms of accessing support and information? Be really pushy. (laughs) Don't take no for an answer. There is a wealth of information out there. For example, with the dyspraxia, we should have pushed harder for physiotherapy and occupational therapy and speech and language therapy. We were told, oh, she's okay, she's not getting any worse. So when you hear that, it's not, not so much a negative thing. It's not a positive thing, but it's not a really negative thing. But looking back, we should have really pushed these therapists are available and the small amount that Tijan's had has made a huge amount of difference and if we'd have done that sooner it could have helped her a lot with her confidence which again would have helped her a lot in her main school life. What effects do you think Tijan's disability has had on the rest of the family? Tijan's disability takes up a lot of time. I have got three younger boys, (laughs) one of them sitting on my lap just now and if she has a seizure of some sort, particularly my eldest, he knows the drill. If it's in the morning before school he knows that Mummy needs to stay with Tijan and make sure that she's okay. If she doesn't come out of the fit within a minute, two minutes, he's very helpful and he'll go and get me the phone if I need to phone for an ambulance or he'll go and get me a midazolam if if I can't leave her. He knows where the box is and he brings it up. He's very good at keeping the little ones occupied as well so that they don't get afraid because it can be quite scary when she's fitting. What advice would you give to families in a similar situation to yours? I would recommend that once you've been given the diagnosis, you would ask to go back and see the doctor for another appointment within about two or three weeks. When you're given the initial diagnosis, you won't hear anything. You'll just hear what the diagnosis is. You won't hear any of the information that they give you, for example, long-term prognosis. You will probably start thinking of questions on the way home and then over the next week or so, ask if you can go back with a list of questions when you can go back in focused and you'll be able to hear what the doctors have got to say. Take a piece of paper and a pen with you. You can write down what they say and then you can read it back when you get home. I think that would have been a great thing for me to have done because I didn't hear anything other than the diagnosis. And then I kept asking my husband, what about this? What about that? You know, if you can go back and have a formal sit down with the doctor after two weeks rather than wait six months for another outpatient appointment, by which time you probably would have forgotten the questions anyway. The Contact a Family Helpline can provide information and support on many of the points raised in this podcast. The advisors on our free phone helpline can assist with issues around benefits entitlement, navigating the NHS and issues around education. We can also locate local and national support groups, provide medical information and link parents whose children have rare disorders. In addition, we produce a wide range of publications. For further information, visit our website at www.cafamily.org.uk or call our free phone helpline on 0808 808 3555. For video interviews with parents, visit our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash CA family. This recording was made in September 2009. The views expressed in this podcast are for information purposes only. The material is in no way intended to replace professional medical care or attention by a qualified practitioner. Condition symptoms may vary in type or severity amongst individuals. This podcast is to demonstrate the personal views and experiences of this family only. For approved medical information about this condition, see the Contact a Family website at www.cafamily.org.uk or contact your doctor 